Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation on the afterlife with Mary Kay Ash. Mary Kay, yes, you have heard that name before, especially in the area of cosmetics. I thought it would be completely appropriate to channel with her today, especially because it seems like on YouTube, if you watch YouTube at all, there's a lot of beauty influencers, a lot of, of how-tos about beauty. And I just thought it would be a good idea to connect with her, communicate with her and have a chat with her, get some advice from her too, for you entrepreneurs or business types as well. All right, so let's welcome Mary Kay Ash. Come on in, Mary Kay. Nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you as well. She is very fancy. I'm going to tell you, and she smells really good. She has a perfume that kind of smells like roses. And I would love to be able to... She's very elegant. She's very put together. And of course, I had to make sure that I had makeup on and kind of did my hair a little bit and, and looked decent to be able to channel with you. I know that sounds silly to some of you viewers, but... It's kind of a respect thing, I think, when you're channeling a woman who has accomplished a lot in her lifetime. So, hello, Mary Kay. It's lovely to meet you again. We um, chatted a bit earlier this morning when I was putting on my makeup. I have uh, uh, two friends of mine that actually have Mary Kay products, and I always kind of thought I grew up with uh, the Avon or the Mary Kay, and my mom used Avon and the neighbors across the street used Mary Kay products and they and to be honest with you they look awesome like we're still friends now obviously they look incredible and I'm like wow maybe I should have been using those Mary Kay products all along you know <laughs> so wow all right okay so let's talk about what has influenced you in your lifetime, the kinds of things that brought you to create the empire that you created. Can you can you talk about us like what influenced you? Sheer necessity. She says sheer necessity. She feels like a shrewd businesswoman, you guys, to be clear. She said sheer necessity. And then she's showing me all of these different, like she's showing me her, um, like a vanity and her bathroom sink kind of thing. And all these different concoctions spread out, like all these different things to try, like home remedy kind of things. And she says, um, there is so much. She says, I learned a lot of about beauty from my grand, she says, I think she's saying grandmother and the cold creams and the, the different textures of the lotions and this incredible beauty regimen that they had. And she is talking about like, like um, thick stuff, like putting like thick, it almost looks like a, it's a cold cream, but it's like old school, like really thick under your eyes to help prevent puffiness. And she's showing me, um, and then she shows me like cucumber and she shows me like mint leaves. And then she shows me, um, the some kind of tape stuff it looks like a clear tape i don't know what it is it's around the lips or the mouth or some kind of tape here tape looking stuff i'm not sure like adhesive kind of thing and like a mask or a treatment or something but it's like adhesive and it's like pulling my the corners of my jaw up and like to prevent wrinkles or something right here i think or tightening the skin tightening the skin and then she's showing me like a um like a the consistency of like petroleum jelly, like a Vaseline kind of thing that just like packed on the skin, packed, packed, packed all around the cheeks here, and just packed on the lips and just packed on the skin. So there's a lot of um, ingenuity, she says, ingenuity. So I was always, she's like, I was always fascinated with all of these different um, there's like painstakingly painstaking processes to be beautiful and it ha I mean it, it must be easier than that like it has to be easier than that she's sharing and but there's more to this than that there's this desire for beauty wanting to be beautiful seeing the actresses and the models and she's saying like Joan Crawford and Marilyn Monroe and seeing these beautiful women and knowing that they go through this incredible painstaking process to be beautiful 
and she said um, back in the early those times it wasn't common to get plastic surgery or she says to go under the knife is what they called it it was excruciating and it was not there was not as much guarantee as to outcome and there was a lot longer process to recover and so like she's showing me so her it looks like a grandmother is what it looks like in, inspired her or in some way influenced her with all these beauty things and that she got curious about it and she wanted to be beautiful she really wanted to be beautiful so she was using whatever she could to um, I don't want to say experiment with that, but to um, see how it felt for her on her face and things that she says, things that make you feel lighter, things that make you feel more vibrant, the skin vibrancy. She's saying the light, the light and the vibrancy of the skin is essential. The elasticity over the long term is extremely important. That's why she says collagen is essential. Retinol is essential in products and things, but there are adverse um there are many f theories now that compete with what we originally knew about beauty, she says, but what, it get, what you get down to is the light. It's the light and the vibrancy of the skin and the way it looks. And healthy skin is important, but the way the, the performance of the skin is essential. And that's the difference. The performance, you need the performance out of your skin. And it's not, there are multiple layers, she says there's three layers that you have to focus on, and that is the short term, the long term, and the staying power. Okay, so short term, long term, staying power. Okay, and then and all of a sudden as I'm talking to her, I'm getting, I have like something in my eye, like literally just flickering in my eye. She's saying like eyelashes, like literally painstaking processes, like the glue, she says, you know the glue that we ha used to have to use to put the adhesive on the eyelashes would actually tear off, she says, parts of the lash at the bottom and it would actually pull your lashes out, some of your lashes. She said it's devastating impact. She says now there's so much technology, there's so much that has been done in the area of the arena of beauty that there are so many choices for women and that makes us very powerful. And she says beauty is power. No matter how you feel about that, it definitely is power. And that's not to say that all women aren't beautiful. Most certainly all women have the capability of being beautiful. And it really goes back to that radiance, that glow for all skin types as well. She says for all skin types. So did you start with skincare or makeup? She's showing me makeup. And then she says, but the essential to good makeup is skincare. So the quality of the skin, you need to have a well-prepared palette to be able to receive the, the color and the, the quality of the product for the, um, she's showing me mascara. I don't know why she's showing me the mascara, but. She said, it's the makeup that sells, but it's the, it's the, it's the skincare that's essential so you, there was a lot of educating that had to be done about skincare, about how to take care of your skin, because many women were doing it for years in the quiet of their bathroom on the vanities, she says, in the medicine cabinets and the cold creams and that kind of a thing. And, and there had to be a bigger discussion about what, what women were doing and what worked to be able to care for their skin long term but it wasn't just about their health and their wellness like she's showing me it's not just about the health of the skin that's not what how mary Kay started it was about helping women to feel beautiful because because women deserve to take care of themselves and they don't have to hide the fact that they care about the way they look and their beauty that's an essential part of who they are is the way that they express themselves and the way that they look can give them a lot of confidence. And just the way a, a cream, she says, just the way the cream, she keeps showing me creams, you guys. She doesn't show me the serums. She says, oh, that came much later. That came much later. She's showing me the creams, the way that they felt and how luxurious they felt and soft to the skin. The actual regimen of doing that and utilizing that is part of the process to help women feel good. And that's what's that's what creates this this radiance, this beauty that comes from from that 
um, routine, she says. So it's not just actually the tangible product results that you get, it's the, it's the process of taking care of yourself that is, that is key. And it, so she feels like part of her role was instrumental in getting women to talk about beauty and not like it was a secret and she, you don't just naturally wake up like this and you don't do anything. It's like you take care of yourself. You, you take the steps that are needed to help yourself feel beautiful. That, that's, that, that is valid and important. That's kind of how she feels. And she says, but lipsticks and nail polishes are one of, two of the areas where women, that is where you'll make your money. She says, that's where you'll make your money. And the color and the ability to change the way you look, like with a lipstick, you know, it, it depends on your mood or where you're going. You will wear a different lipstick. And same with the nail polish. She says the nail color. So those two things are extremely important. And then came the palettes with the eyes. And she says, you're seeing that now. You're seeing so much to be done with the eyes for the expression. And she says that's, and that's another area. She said, but it didn't come until later that the eye makeup, the, the eyeshadow wasn't, it was much more subtle than the lipstick and the nail polish was essential. She's saying those were essential parts. And she's saying, and now makeup is made in such different ways where it's much more humane and better for the environment and more healthy. There's more health consciousness than there was when I first created Mary Kay. And so now the, the team of scientists and, the, and in the lab, the things that are created and the science behind it is amazing. And yet she's showing me that that's part of the natural evolution of the business, but that wasn't the intent of the business. Like she wanted women to make sure that, to feel beautiful and to be able to appreciate like the process of making yourself beautiful, but the process of it was what's so special about it. Do you have perfumes? Cause I can smell like a rose scented perfume on you. She said, yes, yes. Um, she says, but I've had a favorite and she's, it looks like Chanel is what it looks like. You guys, it looks like she wears Chanel. And I don't know if it's number five or number seven or something, but it is Chanel because I can see it in the model. So who influenced you? She's saying my grandmother. She said, there are many strong women. <laughs> she's saying many strong women. She's saying the president's wife. Eleanor Roosevelt? Was it Eleanor? She's like, there are many famous first ladies that influenced, that were, um, how does she say it? That their beauty, their grace was inspiring to me. The grace of who, of how they carried themselves and, and how, how they looked and how they, and again, she goes back to this radiance, like radiating this glow and it's like a confidence and a that's what's beautiful is that confidence in the way you carry yourself and this grace, she says. So she says, Eleanor Roosevelt, Jacqueline Kennedy. Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Joan Crawford, Elizabeth Taylor, Marilyn Monroe. Ava Gardner. Ava somebody, she's saying Ava somebody. Eva, Ava, I think she's saying Ava. So I don't know a lot about your backstory, Mary Kay. I don't know a lot about your backstory. And I don't think she came from money because I think it, she just said I didn't come from money. I think there's something about her family dynamics though that are a little bit different. Um, her, it feels like she may have a daughter and a son, but a daughter for sure. And it feels like there was some um, stuff around the estate. Uh, I don't really want to get into all the, any drama or anything like that, but um, something about, I don't know if she had an, uh, uh, do, a challenging relationship with her daughter or what that was about but it feels like there's some differences of views or opinions. And maybe now that the business is kind of fully passed on, it can kind of be moved into the next generation of beauty. Cause it kind of feels like she's a little stuck in her ways. No offense taken or anything. No, I don't mean any offense by that. Um, but that later on, it looked like she was much more focused on making money and 
which makes sense strategically as a business person, but not um, not as much on innovation, just for the sake of innovation or creativity, not about that, about focused targeted products on beauty that would get big results fast, is what she's talking about. And investing in targeted products around beauty that get big results fast was essential. And she says the neck area, the neck and the wrinkles around the neck, and the to fight the aging process here, she says. And then she also says in the eyes, very two very essential places in the neck, even the decollete, she says, but more so the neck and the eyes. Those are two very important areas. And to, to invest in, in developing something like a serum or products that were targeted at that was really important, she said, strategically as a business and long-term. I also see like two husbands. I don't know what that's about. I think she outlived both of them or two men in her life. I think it's husbands. And I see, I can't, it kind of feels like she's from the South, but I can't tell for sure. There's something Southern about it that's like either Texas or Georgia. And I'm in two different places and I don't know why that is. I feel more Texas-like, but then I see the, like an orange or a peach. So Texas, Georgia, Florida, wow, Bridget, that's really accurate. That's so detailed. Texas. Feels like Texas more. It's like big hair, you guys. Um, I don't know if that's where the headquarters are. Texas, Georgia. Texas, Georgia. I feel like there's cancer. I'm gonna say that. I don't know if she had cancer, if her sister, or someone close to her, woman in her family, cancer. I feel like she's married twice. I feel like she's saying something my first husband. I also feel a stroke or what feels like something where the brain stops working right. Everything doesn't work quite right after, after that. Everything didn't quite work right. I'm feeling like that. Again, I'm not sure if she's talking about her or if she's talking about someone else like a husband or... I just don't know you that well. <laughs> How do you feel, this is a good one, how do you feel about um, like the beauty community now where there's so many different brands and all this kind of stuff and there's this next generation of beauty, beauty like we call them beauty influencers like on YouTube and there's so many different ways to market and sell beauty products and there's, there's boys that are doing makeup and like um, Jeffree Star and um, James Charles sisters <laughs> and I mean there's just so much and then Kylie Jenner there's all this there's all this so uh, do you have any kind of um, views or perspectives on that she said that started after me she said that started after me she says I was in the world of advertising and magazines and and uh, that was much more my wheelhouse, she says. I think it's good that there is much more opportunity for, for young people to um, experience makeup and to find their own business, to be entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial-like, she says, to create your own business. And she says, that part is, that's interesting. That is interesting to me. She says, I can't claim to understand that, but that's interesting to me. And I mean, of course, why, why wouldn't you want more opportunity? But it does create much more competition in the marketplace. And it's a little bit more of a fragmented marketplace than what I was used to, she says. And the fragmented marketplace would require much more uh, pro focused product research and to really identify your core demographic. Otherwise you would, you could miss the boat. So, so these, these, um, these influencer people most certainly must have some kind of a, a dynamic uh, community or group that they are working with that 
responds well to whatever it is that they're they're presenting or they're selling because they must be selling something in order to be able to have that kind of a following and a response. Otherwise, they wouldn't continue to do that same type of work or presentation. She definitely has a business mindset and is definitely thinking about what to do to make money. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's a whole social media thing now. Everything's like there's a social media and there's all this stuff that's different now than it was before. What do you think Mary Kay as a company could do to make themselves more relatable or connected to, to the younger generations, to the influencer style um, beauty communities and, the, and that kind of a thing? Or do you think that that's not really a fit for Mary Kay? She's showing me instead of like a pink packaging, she's showing me a lighter blue packaging, like a swirling of energy around that. And she says, I think products for men is one of the places where we could grow. And she's showing me like facials and body wash and things like that, but not, not, no, not body wash. She says, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to get into uh, a whole, that's a completely different product line. And she says, but, but cleanser and exfoliant and after shave gel and things. And I don't know if they already have this, you guys, but that's how she's showing me. I'm not super familiar with your product line. I have like a sampler set that I got from a friend of mine, a travel set that I used and I like, there's like two of the products in there that I like, but I'm not really, I have other products that I really love too. So from other companies. So she's, and then she's saying, which one did you like the, the eye cream? I kind of liked the eye cream because I liked the application. That was kind of a cool thing. And she said, see eyes, eyes, neck and eyes. She's saying neck and eyes. So uh, she says there's a, um, there's a trend towards serum or scientific based um, products that you put on your skin that aren't as like thick and creamy as the initial products that Mary Kay created. But she's saying that there's, she feels like there's gonna be a return back to the, the creamy textures. And, and she says the interesting part is now that the scent is really important to people. And so you have to be really conscious of the scent. And she said, so uh, I feel like if we stick to our core, our core um, products and just perhaps um, package them in a way that's more appealing to different demographics that might, that might help <clears throat> and make sizes that are smaller so that people can try and she's saying like these boxes where there's like she's showing me like a box of sample products kind of a thing, but a, a variety of products that you could try. Um, but she's also so like the, the mail thing, like where you can get a subscription box and you get stuff sent to you kind of like that. But in a smaller scale, she's showing me that would be an option for them in the future, uh, you know, to, to change things for the future. But I see blue. So that feels like men more to me as well. But there's opportunity there. But she's saying that the cream, there'll be a return back to the creams and things. Anything that illuminates the face, she's saying. Anything that illuminates, not just, not powder, highlighter, makeup, but like things that illuminate the face. So like liquids, and she's showing me liquids. Um, even though there's like this serum, this whole thing around serums now, she's saying like like a, more of a creamier texture that feel it feels like you're getting more, even though it's the same kind of um, products as perhaps the serums, but in the the delivery of it, if it's thicker or creamier, feels richer, it feels like it's doing more. And so she's saying the creams and the thickness and the textures of the, the products is what's gonna matter for the future as well as it has in the past, she says. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, you guys, so for those of you who aren't into the beauty stuff, this may have not been that exciting to you. However, for those of you who are or who are interested in hearing from kind of different types of celebrities or famous people in the afterlife, here we are with Mary Kay Ash and her incredible beauty empire of Mary Kay products. So I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Maybe you are a Mary Kay fan. If you are, go ahead and put that in the comments below. Always great to be able to connect with others who have similar interests like you as well. So remember the purpose here as always is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. 
and the purpose of our weekly channeling videos is to inspire you to live your life. So this beautiful person who is watching this as you radiate from within, this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.